Hey guys, it's been a while. Josh Cross here, and I've got a totally different type of video for you today. We're gonna be talking about what I think is the best free online AI art generator. I've been, you know, spending the past couple of months just totally digging into the AI art stuff since October, really. I've just been playing around with Midjourney and all these other ones. And I think this one I'm gonna show you is probably the best for beginners, both in terms of making your own prompts, of making your own generators so you can fine tune your fine tune stable diffusion to do different things. There's just a lot that you can do with it, and I wanna, I'm I'm excited to show you two, so let's check it out. So it's called Scenario. It used to be scenario.gg, so they recently got the .com domain. So good job team, that's a really good domain name. That's awesome. Uh, you're gonna need to make an account and you'll be able to use it either in the web app or they have an iOS app. And I know they have an Android app under development. I don't know when that one will be ready. So once you make an account, which is free, you'll go into your home and it's going to take you, we've got a couple things here. We've got our home, which shows our generators that we've made, as well as the images that we've generated. Then looking at the different generators, we, again, we have our generators and then the public generators. So these are specifically fine-tuned versions of Stable Diffusion. Then there's also Stable Diffusion 1.5 as well at the bottom. So if you want to do general images, Stable Diffusion 1.5 or Open Journey by Prompt Hero are the two to do. You know, Open Journey is a version of Stable Diffusion that's been fine-tuned to get those kind of artistic, mystical uh, images you get from Midjourney. And then we have all these different generators here that we can use. And there's not that many right now, but they they keep adding more. So it will get you know better over time. Then going back over here, we have our images. This is where you can see the images that you've generated over time. So you can see some of these ones I've made from custom generators, uh, some images that I did from image to image from my dog, Steve Irwin couple of other ones. And then these are all images that I used for my website. In fact, every image on my website over at Kaizen Data AI, uh, I actually uh, generated in scenario. So yeah, this is my website, Kaizen.ai. I'm going to be building all kinds of courses on AI art generation and just generative AI in general. Super, super stoked about that. You can see we've got our little AI mascot, Kai and Zen to make Kaizen. Uh, anyway, yeah, this isn't just a plug for my website, but I just want to point out that scenario is super cool to the point where it it's what I used to generate my uh, images for my website because it was so easy. Now we could create a generator, but I think I'll save that for another video. Um, but first let's generate some images. Now um, we're not gonna generate an image of me. So let's go to the public generator and just to kind of show you how the UI works. Let's do an open journey one. We need to give it a prompt, but we don't need to be a very specific one right now. So I'm gonna choose something kind of broad, like a, a cute Star Wars droid and press enter and it adds it to the prompt. And then if you wanted to add, you know, maybe like sand storm background, you can see press enter again and it adds it to the prompt. So the individual kind of, this is the equivalent of putting commas between them. Then we'll click prompt helper over here. And this is awesome. It is just so awesome. So we have a lot of different descriptors of the thing that we want to generate. So we can look at our style, you know, since we are doing a Star Wars one and Disney owns Star Wars, unfortunately, we'll do a Disney Pixar one and we can always add sharp lines, get a little bit closer here so you can kind of see the different ones. Now we have all of these different options and then we can do the different descriptors among them. I think we don't need to do any of these. Maybe futurism is a good one. Just click that. You can click more a few times. It starts to cycle through the same ones over and over again. And then we'll click art medium. We're not doing Japanese art. We don't want that. I think. I don't want to do character design because I don't want it to be just the droid. Oh, so let's do concept art. That's a good one to do. Concept art. That's probably fine. And then describers. So we could do apocalyptic Star Wars. A lot of other stuff is kind of apocalyptic. We could do maybe add trending on art station, make it a little bit more artistic. Go to our colors. I already said sandstorm in the background and droid. I don't think I need to specify specific colors, but if we wanted to, we could add any colors that you want here. Materials. Aluminum, bronze, clay, concrete. Well, let's do metal. Metal's a good one. Maybe titanium. That could be cool. Um, yeah, that's good. Let's go to lighting. Because we're gonna be doing it outside, you can do sunlight or you know, whatever you want. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do global illumination. Then let's see, let's scroll down. So we have different types of lighting. Go to framing and I think let's do let's do a full body shot. Maybe that's a good idea. Full body shot sounds good. And render. We can do the usual octane rendering, maybe Unreal Engine rendering, and then some details. So you got a couple of photography terms. So if we want to choose our focal length, I think if, if anything, I would do you know something like 35 millimeter. So we get like a, a standard focal length for that. And let's also add depth of field so that we can get a, a nice crisp foreground image with a blurry background. Our epic. We don't really need to choose which epic we want because I already chose. A few 
futurism up up top. Let's look at our weather. I also already put in sandstorm, so we don't need to do that. Aesthetics. So now there's a ton of different aesthetics and you, I mean, a ton of these. So go through these. These are not a, like, even if you don't even generate images in, in scenario, the prompt, gen, this like prompt generator, I guess you could call it, uh, is so useful because you could use this in, in other, whatever stable diffusion that you're using. Let's go to next. Uh, I'm not actually going to add any of those. Let's, let's just leave it. And then others, this just kind of specifies whether it's a game asset or badge or whatever you want. I'm going to leave those alone as well. Let's go up here and click the X and now we see our entire prompt here. Now the next thing I want to do for images is good. 50 sampling steps is fine. Let's see dimensions. Well, we can leave the dimensions at I'm going to leave it at 512 by 512, but it is nice. You have this neat little slider to decide it. Let's keep it simple. And then I do want to add a negative prompt. So I'm going to copy over one of my go to negative prompts and drop it in. And then that just gives us, you know, you can see all of the, the standard things that we don't really want to see in our image. And let's click generate images and I'm going to click it again and again and let's wait for these to generate there we go and you can see that it came up with uh actually pretty decent images it definitely used droid and just thought that droid meant r2d2 it looks like oh you can like, move my face out of the way you can see all of them pretty much all almost all of them are basically r2d2 in some form i think if i change droid to robot that would probably fix it we could easily do that just go up here and click edit and let's change droid to robot and generate images again. We'll just do eight this time. I don't don't need to work the scenario GPUs too much. And we're done. OK, so we can see that it definitely did different things. Uh, we still got some R2D2 kind of style ones, but we, we can see that it did robot a little bit differently than droid. So yeah, small changes can make a big difference there. I just I just love the way that they do the prompts here. I haven't seen any other apps. So if you guys don't have any apps that does it like this, I think this is the best way of being able to like bridge how difficult prompt engineering can be to get what you want. And also, you know, have you still have some say in what actually gets made. Now, they also have a canvas mode. The canvas mode is in beta, so I don't want to show it's been a little bit buggy as I've used it. So I kind of want to wait. And I also know of another tool that uh, I've been using a lot more actually lately that uh, has a, a much better canvas mode just because they've been doing it longer, I guess. So yeah, I can show you that one. Oh, nice. This actually finished while I was recording. So I was making a generator for cute Pixar animals. See all my different Pixar animals here. In fact, let's actually, let's see what we can come up with with that. Let's go to home or, or let's go to generate images, private generators so cute Pixar animals and make a cute robot from Star Wars. I have no idea if this is going to turn out because it's not at all like the training data that I put in. Let's go ahead and grab my, my negative prompt that I like to use and generate. You guys are literally seeing the first time I've used this this generator. So it'd be interesting to see how it turns out. It might be hugely disappointing. <laughs> okay, so here are the ones I can definitely see that I've overfit it for this kind of style of character, but it's actually kind of the kind of style that I was going for when I made the generator. So my cute Pixar animals generator is not great for creating robots from Star Wars. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this video. Let me know what you kind of think of me doing these types of videos and I'll see you in the next one.